Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to working here on my Moon Crab custom kit bash here of the Space Crab Pod kit and the Moon Gundam. And then we've also got the Jim Jim head in there for good measure. So I know it's been a while since I've given you guys an update on that. So sorry, but as you can see, I've got the kit fully painted now and I did go ahead and hand paint this. And I did go ahead and put some decals on it as well. And then basically the final step that I have is just I'm going to do some more weathering on it. So I just wanted to give you guys a look at how the kit is looking before I get to do any weathering. Just because I posted a, a photo of this on Instagram and some people were thinking, uh, were pointing out how good they thought the weathering looked already. As it is, I haven't done any weathering on it. This is just how it looks, just painted. I just painted this. Uh, in a way that I hand painted it in a way to leave the paint intentionally looking kind of splotchy as you guys can see and the point of that is to basically make it look weathered even before I go in and do any weathering on it so you've got all the colors there everything you know is represented in terms of where I want the main colors and everything I might do a, a little bit more detail painting painting in like a couple little details and things like that here and there but for the most part all the colors are there they're done in the way so that part of the weathering is kind of already done for me there in terms of just like a kind of overall grime look to the paint here's a look at one of the claw arms so I definitely want to do a lot more weathering like in here on like the gray parts because obviously with these mechanical bits those are the areas that would be kind of more dirty from oil and dust things like that and then obviously want to do some uh, here on the outside and i should mention that all of the paints here are just the sms paints that i used for this like here's the fuel tank that's going to go there on the back and how that's looking so all sms paints all the decals are like 99, 95% of the decals are all from the Space Pod Crab Kit. I did go ahead and use a couple other decals here and there that were just from other decal sets, but most of what you can see on here is just from the Space Pod Crab Kit. As far as the weathering that I'm gonna be doing on it, I'm mostly just gonna be using some Mr. Weathering colors here from Mr. Hobby. So I wanna use this dark brown one here. This is ground brown for like a ground type mobile suit or something like that this is what I would use like primarily just because it's darker basically just gonna be using this to fill in like some of the panel lines and things and some of the darker areas uh, most of the other kind of uh, weathering wash that I'm gonna be doing over this is gonna be a mixture of these colors grayish brown and light grayish just because this is supposed to be you know working in space working on the moon or some moon a moon just generically a moon and we typically think of the moon being kind of like a lighter dust stone kind of color so i imagine like some of that moon dust you know getting mixed with just some oil and things like that you know from the machinery would be something along the lines of a color like this probably so just going to be doing a little bit of this using some of these washes around on the kit maybe a little bit of dry brushing on a couple of the hard edges here and there just to simulate some some chipping of the paint a little bit and that is kind of going to be about it All right guys, so at long last, here is the final result on my moon crab. I'm sorry that there was a long delay kind of between the works in progress until now, finally getting to the finished product on this, but I'm really happy with how this came out. So one thing that I like about this is just how unique and different it is. It's quite, you know, I've not really seen too much quite like this. And that's one of the things that I like most about this build. There's not really, you know, the weathering I think came out all right. The actual like kit bashing and customization I think came out all right, but none of that is really like super highly technical, like high skill, you know, requirements for that stuff. Like the kit bashing that I did was relatively easy and I didn't do like a ton of customization, a ton of like scribing and plot plating and stuff like that on it. So I mean like as far as the actual build goes, you know, fairly easy build. 
the paint job, you know, nothing really all that special, just hand painted it. And like I said, as far as the weathering goes, I'm definitely no expert on that. I'm still, you know, working on building up my weathering skills very slowly, little by little. But my point is that while it's not necessarily like the most technically, you know, skill level amazing build, you know, out there, I'm, I'm just really happy with this just because it's so, I think, cool looking and like I said, different, unique. I'm really happy with how the colors came out. Uh, the hand painting that I did on this actually, I think, came out pretty well <laughs> as far as like different hand painting that I've done in the past. I think this is definitely one of the uh, better attempts that I've done at it, which is really nice just for me personally to see that I think, at least with this one, it was kind of evident that I can see some growth in my hand painting with lacquers uh, skills. So I'm really excited to, you know, keep doing that on future builds. I want to do it on like every build going forward. I will be getting back to doing some airbrushed builds here for the next one probably. But painting in this way is definitely something that I enjoy doing. I like the way that it looks. So I'll definitely be doing it, of course, on any kind of like machining creature type builds of course and then on some Gumpla from time to time and other different kinds of modeling as well and yeah as far as the weathering goes I showed you guys just a little bit of that there wasn't really too much else other than what I showed you uh, I did some like filtering and washes here and there with a couple different colors of the Tamiya weathering color the only other thing that I did then after that was I did use some Tamiya weathering pigments a little bit as well here and there just to give a little bit more color variation you can see like some spots of kind of like orangish looking kind of rust bits you can see a little bit here and there just to give you a little bit more color variance and I thought that orange uh, pigment also worked really well with the, kind of the warm orangey kind of color scheme overall with the white being kind of a warmer white and you have like obviously a lot of orange in there and then some red and the white's kind of neutral in there as well so overall kind of warm color scheme and I was gonna go in and do a little bit of chipping as well but then I kind of just decided not to I don't know I was thinking that I was just really happy with the way that it looked that I didn't really think that I needed to go in and add some more chipping maybe I could have done like a little bit here and there but there was already like a little bit of like the essence of what looks like chipping here and there just because of the way that I painted it that I was kind of happy with the look of it as it is and I thought well okay I'll just not, I was not doing any chipping. I guess thinking about this somewhat realistically, I don't like to get too tied down in like thinking about like these machines super realistically just because they're not for one, but that is something that you kind of develop, I think, along with your weathering skills. As you develop your weathering skills, you're able to make things look more realistic so you can put more thought into how things would be weathered realistically. And I was just thinking for this one, if I'm imagining this as like a basically a space, a piece of space machinery, it's probably not gonna get like a ton of chips and everything. It's not like going into battle. I guess depending on like what it's using its claws for, maybe a bit more like chipping and scratching, maybe around the claws is something I, I could have possibly done, I guess. But like I said, I got to a point where I was very happy with how it was looking and I decided to call it done. So what do you guys think of it? You can let me know down in the comment section below. I'm always looking forward to hearing your guys' thoughts and critiques uh, about the custom builds, things that you thought could have been done differently or better in different ways. Another thing, like if I were to go back and you know do this kit again, another thing that I may want to add into it is I think a couple of LEDs could have looked kind of cool to light up the lights and the back of the backpack and then the light and like the sensor there uh, that you can see kind of hidden behind the visor there to add a couple of lights I think could have been cool because I think this is a model kit that's going to look really nice under kind of like dim lighting. So if you have it in kind of dim lighting and then with like a couple of lights coming out of it I think it could have looked kind of interesting so that's something that maybe I would have liked to have done other than that I, I like I said I feel pretty happy with this it was just something that I thought would be fun to make I really enjoyed making it so at the end of the day that's really all that matters I guess anyway guys thank you so much for watching if you want to check out any of these kits or other kits of course you can check out the link in the video description to us at Gundam store you can get all sorts of kits paints supplies and all that good stuff to make some of your own custom creations but until next time if you'd also like to like and or subscribe that'd be greatly appreciated but hope you guys are all having a great day I'll see y'all later bye bye